Hi, welcome back to Joe Blogs. In today's episode, I want to talk to you about the ongoing panic on the Chinese stock markets and to share with you an incredible story about an exchange traded fund that specializes in investing in US stocks that has seen a run on its stocks where people are wanting to buy the shares so desperately that the price has now risen to around 50% above the net asset value, which is absolutely crazy. So in today's video, we'll take a look at what's been going on with the Chinese stock markets. We'll then have a look at all of the stimulus packages that the Chinese authorities have issued over the last 12 months or so, because China has been constantly trying to revive the stock market by announcing all sorts of relaxations and impetuses to try to get the market going again. But in spite of all of those efforts, it hasn't actually worked and the market has continued coming down, which tells us that there are some serious fundamental issues going on in the Chinese stock markets. We'll then take a look at what's happened with this exchange traded fund because I think that's a really incredible story and just shows the level of concern that's going on right now within China because these are Chinese individuals that are buying this stock. This isn't overseas investors taking a punt on what might happen in China. This is the people who are living in China. We'll then talk about what's going on with regards to the Chinese Yuan because China has actually been supporting the Yuan. When you look at what's happening with the Chinese stock markets, which are at their lowest level for five years, and also the fact that China is now into a deflationary cycle where prices are falling and factory gate prices are falling at an even more rapid rate, which tells us that prices are likely to continue falling. You would have expected the Chinese Yuan to have devalued in the international markets, but its value has actually remained flat since July of last year. And the main reason for that is that the Chinese authorities are supporting it. So we'll have a look at exactly what's been happening with the Yuan and talk about those support measures. We'll then talk about what's going on with regards to direct investment into China because that's fallen to a record low as well, which again tells us that the world is concerned about what's happening with the Chinese economy. And then finally today, I'll wrap up with my summary. So what I think is going on in China right now why these stock market crashes are happening and what's likely to happen over the course of the next three to six months. But before we get started on all of that, once again, I would like to say thank you so much to everybody that's supporting the channel. If you have bought me a coffee, sent me a YouTube super thanks or signed up as a patron or a member, thank you so much. Your support really does help to keep the channel going. This chart shows the movement in the CSI 300, which are the 300 largest companies that are listed on the Chinese stock market over the last five years. And as you can clearly see, over the last five years, there have been two distinct cycles. Between January 2019 and February 2021, the CSI recorded a record-breaking run and hit a high in February 2021 of around 5,800. However, since that time, the story has changed dramatically. And as you can see, over the last three years, the index has collapsed and is now trading at a level of around 3,300, which is the lowest that the index has traded since January 2019. And if we zoom in and have a look at what's been happening over the last 12 months, you can see that the shape of this graph is really quite concerning because it is almost a 45 degree downward line. The market has crashed over the last 12 months. This time last year, the index was trading at around 4,200. So the current level of around 3,300 represents a fall of more than 20% in the last 12 months. And if we compare that performance with what's been happening with the US S&P 500 index, you can see that over the last 12 months, the S&P index is up by more than 20%. And if we take a look at the five year position for the S&P 500, there has been almost consistent growth. The only time that the index came down was during the COVID pandemic. So this analysis is telling us two things. Firstly, the Chinese stock market has performed very badly over the last three years and particularly over the last 12 months. And this is not a global phenomenon. What we're seeing is the Chinese market going down while indexes around the rest of the world have been going up. So the problems that we're talking about here are specifically related to China. So let's have a look at what the Chinese authorities have been doing to try to turn things around. 
This chart shows the movement in two of China's largest stock market indexes, the CSI 300 that we've just looked at, which is shown in orange, and the Shanghai SE Composite Index, which is shown in blue, dating back to January 2023. And as you can see, over the course of the last 12 months or so, both of these indexes have seen a considerable fall in their value. But the reason that I wanted to share this chart with you is that it highlights all of the stimulus measures that the Chinese authorities have introduced over the last 12 months in an effort to try to kickstart the market, to try to stop the decline in share price values. In response to a sharp drop in all of the stock markets in August 2023, China's security regulator unveiled a package of measures trying to kickstart the market. And as you can see, the immediate impact of the introduction of these measures was that the market did actually go up slightly. And the regulators followed this up on August the 28th by halving stamp duty on all stock trading. And on September the 1st, Chinese security regulators tightened scrutiny over program trading in an effort to stop automated trading programs causing share price falls. Despite the introduction of all of these measures, the market continued to fall. And on October the 23rd, the Chinese state fund announced that it had bought a number of exchange traded funds. So basically what we saw was the Chinese authorities using their central money to buy shares to try to lift the prices. And alongside this centrally coordinated action, on the 30th of October, Chinese listed companies under pressure from the Chinese authorities unveiled share buybacks and purchase plans. So again, these companies were trying to increase their own share prices by buying back shares. If you reduce the number of shares that are in issuance, theoretically, your share price should go up because the value of your company divided by the number of shares equals your share price. Now, as you can see from the shape of the chart, the immediate impact of these measures was that share prices did rise slightly. However, over the next month or so, prices continued to fall. And on the 27th of November, the Beijing Stock Exchange banned major shareholders of listed firms from selling stock. So basically, you weren't able to sell your shares if you held a large amount of them. So once again, this was trying to reduce the amount of shares that were being sold to try to keep prices up. However, unfortunately, that didn't really have any impact on the market. And on the 1st of December, another state-owned company, China Reform Holdings Corp, said it had bought back tech-focused index funds. So once again, we had the Chinese authorities buying shares in the open market to try to drive prices back up. That initiative didn't work. And on January the 8th, the Chinese regulators lifted stock net selling bans for mutual funds in another effort to try to drive up prices. Unfortunately, as with all of the other measures on this chart, that had very little impact. And on the 24th of January, the Chinese regulators announced further stimulus. China made a big move to stimulate the economy on Wednesday. The country's central bank said it would cut the amount of cash banks must hold as reserves from February 5th. It's the first such cut for the year as policymakers try to shore up a weak economic recovery amid plunging stock markets. The world's second largest economy struggled to build a strong post-health crisis recovery last year. It saw distress in the housing market, local government debt risks and weakening global demand. People's Bank of China Governor Pang Gongsheng said Wednesday's announced move would free 1 trillion yuan or $139 billion to the market. We will cut the reserve requirement ratio for all banks by 50 basis points on February the 5th and will free up 1 trillion yuan to the market. We will also cut relending and rediscount interest rates by 25 basis points for the rural sector and small firms from tomorrow. It's the biggest cut in just over two years and beyond most analysts' expectations. The reduction follows earlier cuts of 25 basis points for all banks in March and September last year. China's stock market tumbled 13% last year and extended its slide in the new year due to relentless foreign selling. Some analysts say more stimulus will be needed this year as authorities try to fight off deflationary risks. In December, top Chinese leaders at a key meeting pledged to take more steps to support the recovery. But so far, policy measures have only slightly improved things, raising pressure on authorities to roll out more stimulus. 
As I mentioned at the start of today's video, there has been some incredible dealings on an exchange traded fund listed in China. Now, the Chinese stock market is different to many others around the world. Chinese investors are not allowed to invest in overseas companies, so you can only invest into the Chinese markets. So this obviously limits the choice of what you're allowed to invest into if you're only allowed to buy things that are listed in China. But there are some companies in China that buy shares in overseas companies. And it's this company that I'm talking about today where we have seen an incredible panic. Now, if anybody that owns stocks and shares, you'll know that prices go up and prices go down. And in the periods when prices go down, it can be a little bit disheartening, a bit depressing looking at your portfolio if it's down 5, 10, 15 percent. But for most of us, we take the position of having to stick with it and wear it out. You just sit there and wait for the prices to come back. And that's not what I'm talking about in today's video. What I'm talking about is a state of panic that has taken hold in China, where Chinese investors are now so concerned about investing into Chinese companies that they are desperate to put money into overseas companies. And the only way of doing that is through these China ETFs. And that's where we've seen this incredible situation occurring. This chart shows the listed share price for the exchange rated fund called eFund MSCI USA 50, which is a Chinese listed entity that's investing into 50 companies based in the USA. So essentially what you're doing here as an investor, you buy shares in this fund, but the underlying assets that the fund invests into are shares that are in US companies. So when an investor buys shares in this Chinese ETF, Effectively, they're putting their money into US-based companies. The return that they will get ultimately should mirror exactly what happens with all of those US-based shares. Now, if we look at what's happened to the share price, on the 17th of November 2023, the shares in this ETF were priced at just over one Chinese yuan. And by January the 18th, those shares had increased slightly to 1.047 Chinese yuan. However, on January the 22nd, the shares rose to 1.169 yuan. On the 23rd, they rose to 1.286. On the 24th, they rose to 1.41. And on the 25th, they hit an all-time high of 1.54 Chinese yuan. So over the last week or so, the shares in this ETF have increased in value by around 50%. That's remarkable in itself. But when you take account of the fact that the net asset value of this fund is around one Chinese yuan, the share value currently is about 50% above the net asset value. And just to break that down, the net asset value basically looks at what the fund has invested into and tells you per share what those assets are worth. So the net asset value is telling us that at best, these shares are worth one Chinese yuan each. If you were to sell all of the underlying assets and hand all of the cash back to shareholders, that's roughly what they would receive, one Chinese yuan. So shares should never trade above the net asset value unless either there's some sort of takeover happening or somebody's said that the net assets are undervalued, that something is going to happen to increase the value of all of those assets materially. Now, neither of those two things are happening. There's no takeover and there's no undervaluation. So these shares are not worth more than one Chinese yuan each. And the reason that they've increased to 1.5 Chinese yuan, more than 40% above the net asset value, is because Chinese investors are panicking. They're worried about putting their money into Chinese shares. They don't want to invest into Chinese companies or anything to do with the Chinese economy because everybody thinks that it's going to go down, that there are underlying problems. That's why the stock market has fallen so significantly over the last three years. So Chinese investors are desperately trying to find assets that they can put their money into that don't link back to the Chinese economy. And these overseas ETFs are really all that they have available to them. So what we've seen is a mass exodus of people trying to put their money into this ETF, so much so that the share price has gone up to more than 50% of the net asset value, which is insane because at that point, you're guaranteed to lose money. It's impossible to make any profit if you're buying a share at $1.50 and it's only worth $1. 
That's crazy. But that's what's happening right now in China. And that really tells us that there are some fundamental concerns. This isn't overseas speculators betting on China having a bad 2024. This is investors who live in China, who are looking at the Chinese markets and are desperately trying to put their money into something that isn't related to China. So as we've just talked about, Chinese investors are concerned about what's happening in China, but so are foreign investors. This chart shows the flow of investment monies into emerging market funds and Chinese funds dating back to 2019. And the scale on the left hand side of this chart is shown in billions of US dollars and goes from minus $10 billion at the bottom to plus $30 billion at the top. And we've got two different colored bar charts for each year. The light blue bar chart shows the estimated net asset flow into emerging markets excluding China. And the dark blue chart shows the amount of investment going into funds related directly to China. Now, if we start off by looking at the situation for 2021, you can see that there was a net inflow to Chinese funds of over $29 billion compared to $2.75 billion for the rest of the emerging world. In 2022, the amount of money invested into Chinese funds was less than half than it was in 2021 at just under $14 billion. But this was still considerably more than the whole of the rest of the emerging world, which was $2.2 billion. However, if you look at the situation in 2023, there is a marked change. And actually, the amount of money going into Chinese funds is fallen into the negative territory. And there's actually been a net withdrawal of $1.5 billion. And when you compare that to what happened in 2021, that is a huge turnaround of more than $30 billion. And what this tells us is that external investors are now very concerned about what's going on in China. And this isn't something that's happened overnight. You can see over the last two years, there has been a significant movement away from investing into China and the rest of the emerging world is starting to benefit from that. And this chart shows the amount of foreign direct investment into the Chinese economy dating back to 2010. And the scale on the left hand side of this chart is once again shown in billions of US dollars and goes from zero at the bottom to 400 billion at the top. And what this chart shows is that over the last 14 years, there has been a significant amount of foreign direct investment into China. In total, more than $2 trillion has been invested into China over the last 14 years at an average of around $150 billion per year. However, if you look at what's been happening over the last two years, there has been a marked change. In 2021, total investment hit an all-time high of around $350 billion. However, that figure dropped dramatically in 2022 to around $175 billion. And in 2023, the amount of foreign direct investment fell off a cliff and was actually less than $20 billion, which is around 17 times lower than it was in 2021. And once again, this tells us that there are major concerns from foreign investors as to what's happening right now in the Chinese economy. This chart shows the movement in the exchange rate between the US dollar and the Chinese yuan over the last 12 months. And what this shows is that this time last year, one US dollar was trading for around 6.8 Chinese yuan. And today it's trading for around 7.2, which represents a year on year fall of around 6%, which obviously isn't a great performance. But when you compare it to what's been happening in the stock market, it actually looks quite good. In the stock market, we have seen a crash over the last three years and particularly over the last 12 months. The market is down more than 20% compared with what we looked at in the US where the markets were up by around 20%. And given the fact that China is also in a deflationary cycle, it's actually experiencing deflation right now rather than inflation. Prices are going down you would have expected the Chinese Yuan to have performed significantly worse. And when you look at the fact that between the end of January and June 2023, the Chinese Yuan actually fell from 6.8 to 7.3, you would have expected the performance to continue getting worse, given the fact that the economy is doing badly and so is the stock market. However, since July 2023, 
the market has stabilized. And the sole reason why that has occurred, why we've got a flatlining in the price of the yuan, is because the Chinese authorities are manipulating the market. They are buying yuan in the international markets to make sure that the price does not move. So effectively, the Chinese authorities are operating a price fixing mechanism where they're controlling the exchange rate of their currency. And this will be costing the Chinese authorities a lot of money because markets by definition are driven by demand and supply. So if there's a lot of demand for your currency, its value goes up and so does its price. If there isn't a lot of demand, then the opposite occurs and you tend to see a reduction in the value. And what's happening in China right now is that the Chinese authorities are providing that demand. They are stepping into the market and keeping the price up and that will be costing them billions and billions of dollars. So what's the summary and conclusion today? Well, I wanted to post this video because I think what's happening right now in the Chinese stock market is absolutely fascinating. The example that we talked about in today's video of the exchange traded fund, which has seen its share price rocket from one Chinese yuan to more than 1.5 yuan at the same time as its net asset value has remained entirely flat and is only at one Chinese yuan indicates that there is extreme panic happening right now in China. Chinese investors are limited in terms of what they're allowed to buy. They can't just go out and buy shares that are traded on other exchanges around the world. They have to invest into China. So the only way that they can get direct access to overseas investments is by finding things like these exchange traded funds that invest into overseas companies. And that's exactly what's happened in that example. Everybody is taking their money out of the Chinese stock market and trying to put it into markets that have overseas exposure. And we've got a ludicrous situation where those investors know for sure that they're going to lose money. It's impossible to make money on a share if you're buying it for 1.5 times the value of the underlying assets in the event of nothing else happening. So this tells us that people are not thinking logically. Nobody's doing any clever analysis. In fact, they're not doing any analysis at all. This is a blind panic. Everybody just wants to get out of China and into other economies. And what that tells us is that there are serious issues happening in China right now. As we've seen from the data today, the stock market is down considerably over the last three years. And that isn't because of what's happening around the globe. We saw from the S&P 500 index that it's actually up considerably. So this is specifically related to what's happening in China. And when you look at the fundamentals of what's going on in the economy, that tells us why those concerns are there. Because we've now got deflation, so prices are falling. And as we've talked about in other videos, when you've got falling prices on the shelves, whilst that might represent good news for consumers because they're now paying less than they were this time last year, it's extremely bad news for all of the companies who are making those products. Because year on year, your costs generally go up. China is buying in raw materials from overseas, most raw materials have gone up in price over the last 12 months. So that means that those costs have gone up. Chinese individuals will want to be paid more. So wages are going up in China, but the Chinese companies are making less from everything that they're selling. So essentially what they're doing is making a loss or reduced profit on all of those sales. And that is an unsustainable situation that can't carry on. But when you look at what's happening with factory gate prices, they're actually decelerating at a faster rate than prices. So what that tells us is that this isn't going to turn around overnight. This is going to be a prolonged period where we see falling prices. So that's obviously bad news from China's point of view. In addition to that, the property sector is still on its knees and the property sector makes up around 25% of the Chinese economy. So that isn't going to turn around quickly either. So those fundamentals, when you look at them, tell us that China is in dire straits right now. And the Chinese authorities are aware of this because as we saw in today's video, they've introduced a variety of different packages to try to stimulate the stock exchange. But unfortunately, none of those packages have actually worked. And as I talked about in a recent video, they're now talking about setting up a state-run fund, which is going to inject around 2 trillion yuan into the stock markets to try to bring the prices up. But it's unlikely that that will fix anything. That's just a short-term measure to try to bring prices up. 
the fundamentals are telling us that things are going down. And when you look at what's happening with the Chinese Yuan, it's a very similar situation. In the first part of 2023, there was a significant fall in the value of the Yuan. However, over the last six months or so, it's flatlined as a result of the fact that the Chinese authorities are supporting the value. They're buying Yuan in the international markets to keep its price flat. So all of this is telling us that there are major problems in China right now that the Chinese authorities are trying to gloss over. They're trying to cover over the fact that prices of shares are going down and the price of the yuan is going down by doing things to keep the value up. That isn't fixing the problem. All that's doing is painting over the cracks. So the summary of today's video is that the panic that we're seeing right now in the Chinese stock markets is telling us that Chinese investors are very concerned about what's happening in China. And when you look at the fundamentals as to why they're concerned, I think all of us should be worried about what's going to happen for the Chinese economy. The current expectation is that China will hit 5% GDP growth for 2024. But the big question is, is that realistic? Is it going to happen? Or are we actually going to see the Chinese economy starting to implode? So hopefully you've enjoyed today's video, you found it useful, informative and thought-provoking. If you've liked what I've said, then please give me a thumbs up. Thank you for watching this video all the way through to the end. And here's something to put a smile on your face.